So, Maharishikaji, we had this different uh, Sanskrit sayings that were part of just growing up. One of them is Dharmo Rakshati Rakshitaha, which uh, translates in English as Dharma protects those who protect it. So, in this context, I wanted to understand why does Dharma need protection? And how in turn it protects those who protect it? Well, in this context of what you just said, Dharma, Rakshati, Rakshata, what it's referring to is to maintain the freedom of a space, or in this case, the subcontinent, to allow for all kinds of ways and means to reach the truth. So, whenever in the history of the subcontinent, that freedom has been threatened, where any one religion has attempted to control the thoughts and the search of anyone, that is when the protectors of the Dharma will stand up and fight. Whenever your right and your freedom to choose whatever path you may choose to reach the truth of your existence is threatened by something being imposed on you, that is when you have to stand up and <clears throat> wage war on the enemy of that freedom. And in general, what that stands for are religions, because strong founder religions with their narrow approach to life itself based on strict principles that have to be followed, failing which you go to hell or you go somewhere even worse than that. They are the enemy of that freedom, of that spiritual freedom, which is actually the dharma of the subcontinent. So when that spiritual freedom is threatened, you protect dharma, and you who protect dharma will in turn be protected. How protected? You will be protected in that you can choose any path you want to reach the truth of your existence. There is nobody that can tell you this is the only way. And anyone who says this is the only way is the enemy of dharma. When they increase in numbers and take over, attempt to take over, that's when the subcontinent has always stood up and fought. Because it's also one of the only places or spaces culturally in the world where that kind of freedom exists. I mean, in Europe, certainly you have the freedom to choose whatever, you know, religion or path you want, thankfully. But there is an underlying domination culturally by one religion, just like in other parts of the world you have another religion dominating. These strong founder religions that are dominating will not be tolerated in the subcontinent. They won't. They have never been tolerated. That is why dharmo rakshati rakshata. That's what it means. Fighting for the freedom of choosing one out of a thousand spiritual paths and being accepted by the other for that. That is the point. You have to accept that there are all these paths. Accept the one which says there are no other parts. That's when you have to stand up with, the, with your weapons and fight it. So what you were taught was basically the war cry for freedom. I mean, I don't know how many people would want to live in a, in a culture which is so strongly dominated by a religion, where if you don't follow those things, you're you're in trouble, and you have to pay up, and you have to do all kinds of things. Who wants that? So, the dharma has to be protected. 
then that freedom remains. In the same context, I also wanted to ask you about your interpretation of what uh, Sri Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita when he says, Yada yada hi dharma se glaner bhavati bharataha abhyutthanam adharma se tadatmanam srajamyam. Literally, it just means that whenever there is a downfall of dharma in the Indian subcontinent, Lord Krishna says that that's when again and again I, in a sense, form myself. That's the literal translation. I take form. Yeah, I take form. Yes. Taking form doesn't necessarily in this case mean that he's standing there with a flute in his hand or riding a chariot or something. What it means is that whenever the freedom is threatened, the freedom to explore, when that freedom is threatened, that's when form is taken. That is what it's about finally. The freedom, spiritual freedom, very, very powerful. And also the reason why the Indian subcontinent has always been a magnet for those who wish to go beyond religion into the realms of spirituality. Religion is a stepping stone, you know, but at one point you move into the realms of self-realization. And if you are in a, in a culture or in a place where those steps beyond religion are discouraged or threatened even, you can't proceed beyond that. You just simply can't, they'll stop you. Taking form means a, a coming together of strengths to defend the truth and the freedom to explore the truth every day, every moment, all the time, all the time, all the time. It has to be given that freedom. And it doesn't have to be a religion that is the danger. It can also be extreme forms of capitalism that can become a danger. It can be extreme forms of, of socialism even, or communism, or any ism. The moment it starts to go beyond the tolerance point, that is when that formation happens. And one has seen that in the history of the subcontinent. Dharma is actually spreading all over the world. Dharma meaning also that right to absolute spiritual freedom is starting to become important all over the world and people are fighting for their freedom everywhere.